It was the end of September on Thursday last week, and that means it's time for quarterly production and delivery estimates from Tesla. On Saturday night, right on schedule, Tesla published those figures, which, as I've noted, are estimates, although very accurate estimates, that will very likely be confirmed when Tesla publishes its Q3 financials later this month. Producing 228,882 Model 3 and Model Y combined, and 8,941 Model S and Model X combined, Tesla broke its all-time production record, making 237,823 cars during the quarter. For deliveries, Tesla delivered just over 232,000 Model 3 and Model Y and 9,275 Model S and X, making a quarterly delivery record of 241,300 cars. Now, this puts Tesla's yearly likely delivery and production totals somewhere near the 800,000 vehicle mark for the year, and with every Tesla model said to be sold out until next year, Q4 should be a good one. Shortly after Tesla revealed the Tesla Semi to the world back in 2017, rival big rig company Nikola Motor decided to take Tesla to court for $2 billion. The reason? Nikola alleged Tesla stole the wraparound front window for its Semi, claiming that Tesla infringed three patents that it obtained in 2016. These patents described the way in which various design elements of the Nikola One Big Rig were all tied together. We've covered the case several times on the channel, and with Nikola now fully disgraced and under investigation by the SEC, it's hard to believe it has much of a future right now. But this week, we may see the case quietly end with little more than a fizzle. You see, last week, a federal judge administratively closed the case, stating that Nikola, quote, has dropped the ball and this 2018 action is languishing without explanation or apparent good cause, end quote. Nikola has until tomorrow to submit in writing why the case should not be dismissed for failure to prosecute, but I don't see it happening, do you? There's been an ongoing battle taking place this year between General Motors and Ford, but rather than be about some particular automotive standard or technology, the battle has been about the name that each automaker uses for their take on semi-autonomous driver assistance tech. Tesla has its autopilot, self-driving beta semi-autonomous driver assistance tech, and for several years General Motors has offered its Super Cruise hands-off divided highway semi-autonomous tech, as offered on high-end cars like its flagship Cadillacs and more recently its Chevrolet Bolt EUV. When Ford announced its functionally similar technology to Super Cruise, as debuted in the Ford Mustang Mark E, would be called Ford Blue Cruise, GM got upset. It went to court to sue Ford, claiming the name was too similar to Super Cruise and GM's autonomous vehicle division, Cruise Automotive. In court papers, GM argued that Ford's name would confuse customers and asked Ford to be forced to change the name. But over the weekend, it appears that both companies have kissed and made up, with both about to sign an out-of-court settlement. Given GM thought selling the Vault and Bolt wouldn't confuse people, I can't see how any of its claims had any merit anyway. With perhaps the exception of the earliest days of the automobile before Henry Ford invented the production line, electric cars have traditionally always cost a little more to build and buy than internal combustion engine vehicles. And for automakers, that's meant that the profit margins on ICE vehicles have always been a little higher than they've been on electric cars, one of the many reasons cited by auto industry executives rightly and wrongly over the years as to why they've not really gone all in on electric. But that's changing. In a recent interview with Reuters, Audi CEO Marcus Deussmann stated that he believes Audi is close to the point where it will make as much money as it can from electric cars as internal combustion engine models, stating that he believes Audi's profit margins for EVs will overtake the internal combustion engine cars in the next few years. It shows that economies of scale are really finally coming into play, helped in Audi's case by the shared platforms it uses from parent company Volkswagen AG. But don't get overexcited. Increase Increased profit margins don't always mean lower prices, and so far we're seeing prices across the board raise for all cars. It's no secret that Tesla CEO Elon Musk isn't a fan of California, or rather he's not a fan of the laws that the state of California has on its books that impact how companies can operate, treat their staff, and expand their operations. He's also not a fan of some of the local laws in Fremont, California, where Tesla's OG production facility exists, most famously demonstrated last year when emergency local stay-at-home regulations temporarily halted Tesla's production line. Following several threats of legal action against both the city of Fremont and the county of Alameda, Musk announced that he would be moving Tesla's headquarters to Texas. Texas Texas, of course, is known for having far fewer business and employment regulations than California, even if that means less protection for workers and some state policies that are far from equitable. Tesla has remained largely quiet on the move, but this week, when Tesla published its quarterly production and delivery estimates, it listed the company as being in Texas, followed by Elon Musk confirming on Thursday that Tesla has indeed moved its headquarters there. But don't think Tesla is leaving California. Musk says Tesla will expand its operations there, as it will in other states too.
Aside from, oh, a continuing global pandemic that still shows no signs of slowing, this year has been plagued by an ongoing microprocessor shortage that has made anything gadget-shaped incredibly expensive, caused major delays in the electronics industry, and has decimated the supply chain for the auto industry. The average wait time for new cars has soared as people order and buy off-spec online rather than off-dealer lots, and most automakers have been forced to halt at least some vehicle production. Exactly which production lines have been paused varies from automaker to automaker, but for the most part, vehicle that automakers know will command a high price and sell quickly have been prioritised. Sometimes that means EVs have priority and sometimes not. But this week we learned that Stellantis has been prioritising electric vehicle production, sending all chips to electric cars above internal combustion models. This is most noticeable in Europe since there aren't many plug-in options in North America from the automaker. Since EVs sell for more and help Stellantis avoid fines for not making enough EVs, it's hardly a surprise this is happening, but we can't look a metaphorical gift horse in the mouth. SK Innovation, mortal enemy of LG Energy, has officially spun off its battery production company into a brand new subsidiary called SK Own. Despite being accused of stealing LG Energy's trade secrets earlier this year, SK has managed to secure some pretty important battery partnerships in recent months, including with Volkswagen in North America and Ford that will see it work with each respective automaker to build huge new battery production facilities to supply cells for Volkswagen's North American EV production lines, Ford's new F-150 Lightning pickup, and brand new next generation generation vehicles promised by Ford and Lincoln in the future. Spinning off from the pairing company not only reduces risk for SK Innovation, but it also means that SK On gains some autonomy from the parent company and can hopefully react a little more quickly to market demands. Right now, SK On says it wants to expand its global production to more than 500 gigawatt hours by 2030, up from the current production capacity of 40 gigawatt hours per year. That might sound like a massive goal, but right now, with the auto industry going electric, SK will have no problems finding customers willing to help it execute on its plans.